There's a mild nervousness now with you stood behind me. A lot of people get that. Nothing to do with I this. I promise shooting. I'm not going to touch you. This is my gun. This is my stock. I built this stock many years ago, seven years ago to be precise. In the last seven and a bit years, I have changed shape. My jaw has got wider. I have put on weight a little bit. I have changed shape. My vision has changed. My shooting style has changed. I'm a changed man. And as such, it's about time that I realized that it's time maybe to look at getting a new stock. Not that there's anything inherently wrong with this one, but I've had to cast it a little bit and it's evidently not the perfect stock for me anymore. So, what to do? Alter what I've got, make a new one, adjust a new gun, buy a new gun, or get a new stock. Well, stocks can be quite expensive and more importantly, quite hard to get a hold of in the UK. This is where the computer comes in. Very recently, because of the COVID pandemic, Manuel Ricardo, a stock maker in Portugal, started doing online gun fitting and click one click gun stock making. So you go on the internet, you press some buttons and they send you a stock fully built just for you. So I am going to try out that process because I for many years have been thinking there is a formula to gun fit and I'm hoping that these guys have cracked that formula. So first things first, so we're gonna go, we're gonna go in Manuel, Ricardo, boom. So here we are, the best for the best, a vision for gunstock, made for you. And there's a picture, I suppose, of Manuel Ricardo holding a fairly swanky piece of wood. So, gold reception, one-click gunstock. This is what we're interested in. Journey-free online capability, order now. Make a model of your gun. Maruku MK38, uh, gunstock and forend. Maybe just a gunstock. Uh, tell us about your intentions, what you really want to do, have some special details. Stock for sporting clays use. I currently use a straight flat stock, like to move to a fitted Monte Carlo. Preferences, gun stocks for hunting, gun stocks for competition clays. Please enter any two digits. 12 is the example, let's put that in, send it info. All right, I'm gonna grab a coffee and we'll see what happens. So that was significantly quicker than I could have imagined. I had an email and then moved pretty much straight to WhatsApp with a guy called Joao. Joao has sent me all of the forms that I need to fill out. So instead of filling out all the dimensions, which are fairly standard and going to any good gun fitter to be fair, so you could potentially go to a decent gun fitter, come away with this film, fold out, send it off and get your gun done. However, we're in lockdown, so that's not really an option. So we're here, form two, as you can see. Form two, we have measurements to take. Index finger, thumb width, length of the tip of your finger, the width of your bottom three fingers, the width of uh, the, your palm, the breadth of your shoulders, age, weight, this is a real reality check, and the length from the inside of your arm to the tip of your finger there. Form four is asking which shoulder you shoot from, right or left, eyes to shoot, one eye or two, steering eye, right, left or neutral. Step one, crush your face against the gun stock below, if possible to note the difference between point A and point B, and then check the drop. And then, what category are you shooting? Trap, sporting, skeet or hunting? Talking to Joel, he said, I can just take the drop off my current gun if I'm satisfied with it if I want, which I'm going to do because I am satisfied with the drop. Although, to be fair, it's maybe a millimeter, a millimeter too low for the way that I shoot now. After that, I have to take four photos. Please to precisely replicate the following. We have one of my hand on the gun like that, showing my line of sight. And all of these things have angles that I presume they're going to use for their use. Then we have Distance between the top of the shoulder and the bottom of the stock. We have the angle of your arm. I guess that's how they're gonna then calculate that measurement there. Cause you know, you see all these people using this as a, a gun fit measurement. And to be fair with my gun, it is pretty much bang on for the length. So I can't say that it's incorrect, but there is a lot more that goes into it. So it will be an interesting one. After that, the point of the gun to show, I guess, how level you hold it, and then at what angle your head is over the gun. This is proper scientific stuff. This is just as good as I thought it would be. And then a face on picture. That face on picture wants you to have your head, 
the width of your eyes, I guess, the difference between your eyes, the angle of your cheekbone, all these sort of things should be relatively interesting. And then he wants three videos. One of mounting the gun from the side, one of mounting the gun from the front, I guess, to see how hard you roll your head, and then one of mounting the gun up into the sky. Let's get going. So, information sent. Didn't take long to do the process. I had a few questions. They answered them pretty much immediately. Apparently, most of the communication they do is either through WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger, just because it's so much faster, and it, it really is. Like, there's no email typing. You can ask short questions, they get back to you. So far, the process is going really well. I should point at this moment, like, I've spoken to six people that I trust with guns and gun fit on this subject, and every single one of them is dubious as to the result, which excites me even more for this process. So, information sent. Let's see what the next stage is. They sent over some footage of what was happening in the factory, which is a real nice thing to see. It's an amazing mixture of CNC tech and a lot of hand finishing, way more than you'd expect for the price point. There's something really reassuring about the fact that this is a craftsman built item, and as such, it adds a little bit of romance to the process, which is another selling point to me. At every point, a man should be involved, a man's involved, and at every point, a computer's involved, a computer is involved. It's an impressive balance. Three weeks of silence, and I was informed that the stock was ready for shipping. And now it's here. Uh, the French sat on it in their customs for a little while. God bless the French. But it is finally here. Someone has opened it just to check it. And so this is my first proper look. Firstly, I love the boxes. It's really classy. Pad and spacer. That's interesting. To be fair, I think that's a really nice touch to have that little bit of wood in the spacer. Better than an inch long pad. It's only about an inch. Well, there it is. Look at that. And just a few weeks ago, there was no measurements. There was nothing. It was just a stock, just a dream. And now it's here. I mean, the process on the whole so far has been utterly satisfactory. The stock work looks great. Like. The wood is nice, it looks exactly it does in the photos, photos do it justice, I think a lot of time photos can embellish wood. I really like the laser engraving, this is completely optional, which I thought, but to be honest, I've seen, I saw Gordon's, I thought it was really nice, so I thought I'd have it on mine too. The checkering is phenomenal, the grip, the grip feels good, like, it looks very fit for purpose, I like it a lot. To be honest, it also kind of just looks like a stock at the moment, should we stick it on the gun, have a little look how it looks on the gun, have a little feel, how it fits, and then go to a playground. All right, so this is the moment of truth. And I, I must admit, I feel a bit emotional about this. I mean, I, I made this stock many years ago and I made it to be as classical as, as possible because, well, shooting a Mark 38 is a game gun. I kind of wanted to have a proper English style stock and I succeeded in some uh, level than having a toothpick, I can cut cut this piece of wood out of a tree myself. So it's, it's interesting, but all good things must come to an end. It doesn't fit me that well anymore because I am older and less flexible, and my shooting style has changed. So had a lot of good times with this piece of wood. Luckily, it's not going anywhere, so I'm going to clip it back on if I ever feel like being nostalgic. But times change. I mean, we could just do a quick comparison side by side. It doesn't take a lot if you lay one over the other to see the key differences. Firstly. Although this stock is fatter and looks shorter, because it's deeper, it looks totally different. We actually let it level these up. The grip is deeper, the stock is significantly deeper if we put them butt to butt. That is just a stylistic choice, which is fine. Interestingly, they have about the same length of neck there, but this, because it's so harshly cut up and a little bit deeper than that, just looks different. I'm looking forward to slapping it on the gun. At this point, I should say the gun is not dirty, it's just old case hardening that you should not do to a Maruku. This is the new lease of life, look at that. Boom. Uh, just to prove a point, the wood always looks better on a gun. There it is on the gun, just offered up. I honestly think that 
the branding and the quality of the hardware on here is top notch. It's really nice, really nice. It comes with a load of these rings. So we can set that adjustable cup home comb up to see as much or as little rib as we want to. And I don't know, I think as a sporting gun, a clay gun, you would be perhaps silly not to have an adjustable comb on it given the way that styles change, targets change and disciplines change, it would be intelligent to have a gun that can change a bit if you're ordering this as a sporting stock. It went against the grain a bit because, well, I, I prefer fixed combs, but it doesn't matter. Practicality does outweigh other options here. So let's crank this stock on and see how we go. Stock is on. Uh, they put it with a browning stock tool, which I suppose was intelligent. I don't know why I went in straight in with a Beretta one. There we go, on the smallest spacer, there is the cheek piece. Let's just leave it set bang in the middle. I was worried. However, now it's on the gun. I am gonna agree, it actually looks pretty good. So let's put this on. That takes it out to, I think it, so I had a quick measure up, it is a centimeter, just over a centimeter longer than what I had before. So here we have it, a fully fitted, over the internet, gun stock. We spoke about the Monte Carlo uh, at fair length actually. I sort of wanted to have about 5mm Monte Carlo just to, as much as I can see my neck and my back getting worse and stiffer, and it certainly has over the last sort of 10 years. And so I thought having a Monte Carlo does future proof this for me a little bit. They said, you could have a Monte Carlo. You could do without one, but you could have a Monte Carlo if you want. So here it is. It's, um, it's all right. It's a nice piece of wood. The finish is good. The headwork is very adequate. Like everything about it is, is great. I even quite like the pack. Should we stick some barrels on it? Doesn't feel like my gun. That's weird, isn't it? That's, um, a bit like putting your wife in for plastic surgery. I mean, it has achieved everything I want to achieve. Like, I'm having to be less aggressive with the gun. Like, it just comes up to where I need it. Without too much contortion. All right, there you go. I'm officially happy. There you go. I was genuinely worried, and now I am made up. I suppose I should have gone for a different forend, but my forend is... I wouldn't have changed the style of my forend at all, so it wouldn't have changed anything. Just there's a slight color indifference there, but that I can probably sort out. Imagine the difference of getting this stock out of the box and something I was a little bit paranoid about when you'd never had a fitted stock before. And I'm acutely aware of gun fit. It's a large part of what I do for a living. So for me, I kind of knew what was gonna come out of the box. However, where I can see this being a real hit is with people who have never had a gun fitted. 70 odd percent of people probably can just grab a gun off the shelf and go and shoot. And most of them will be close enough with very minor tweaking. Especially you get interchangeable pads and all sorts now, adjustable combs. However, for those realistically over about six foot two, people who are a little bit wider, have funny eyes, funny jaws, not funny, just different, not, you know, everybody's different. Having this custom stock would be such a game changer. And to be honest, to me, picking this up versus that old thing there, it is chalk and cheese. That extra centimetre, of length is bang on. The choices of all the dimensions, the grip especially is something that you notice. A properly proportioned grip that fills your hand nicely is so game changing. So game changing. I liked what I did with that gun. However, interestingly, I'm not 23 anymore. Let's go and shoot it. I think, I don't know, how do you improve on perfection? I, I don't know, I think it's gonna be a very, very different machine. I mean, the gun is a little rearward heavy now, which is interesting. Whereas before it was about just under a quarter inch in front of the hinge. Only one way to find out. I'm a bit nervous. Let's go. So we're here and it is here ready to rock. 
This is Ed Solomons, a world-class shooting coach. Off of the past. What do you think? I mean, fit and finish to you. Does the, uh, does the fluff come as part it's of the deal? It's a very sharp checkering. Yep. Uh, it's like very that. good at pulling cases apart. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that's very impressive, all, all part of the service. But, I mean, it, it looks, looks very nice. The, uh, the quality of the, uh, the workmanship looks good. The important bit will be how you find it when you shoot him. I mean, do you want to check fit at all? Let's have a little bit of a look at it. Um, stick her up just in, in that direction so no one gets the hump. So obviously it's the first time I've actually seen you mount a gun, so I don't, so it's know, probably what, not ideal, I don't know what is normal for you, but just do a couple of dry mounts for me. Okay, let's come down the front, keep it there. And you're used to presumably seeing a little bit of rib? A little bit. Yeah, okay. Just go again for me. Decent contact in your shoulder for the pitch, which is, that's a good start. Mm -hmm. Grip wise, that's the bit that I would always be curious as to how a, a sort of a, a remote fitting goes. How does it feel from your perspective? Hand position looks reasonable to me, but how does it feel? Because at the end of the day, that's what it's about. I mean, 90% perfect, which is unbelievable. Yeah. Like there's a little bit here that catches my fingers just by being a little bit too full in the radius, but. Okay. Seeing as the man's never met me, I feel like. No, that, that, that in itself is impressive. Um, yeah. And to be honest, if you feel that the grip feels 90 odd percent right, it's better than most people Which off is the about shelf. 40% um, for an off the shelf. And I should think you've got reasonably big hands as you're a, you're a big lad, so most stuff's not going to fit you or feel right from scratch. So let's see you break a few clays with it. Let's give it a try. Yeah. This whole new course today, uh, this is the first day of it, so you're going into this as blind as I am. So right to left crosser, on report incomer, five pairs, do what you'd normally do. All right. There's a mild nervousness now with you stood behind me. A lot of people get that. Nothing to do I with the I promise shooting. I'm not going to touch you. Whew. Oh. It's different. Go again. Just get used to it. The biggest issue you've got on that first bird, your hold point's too high. It's okay. coming out under your barrels. That's why yeah. you're seeing it late. So if you can just drop your hold point down by probably three or four feet, what you want to be doing, because you can't see the machine, you can make a landmark on this tree. Yep. So when we show you one, figure out where it comes out. That just it actually comes out on the end yeah. of that branch. Your hold point being up here, it it comes under it, your yeah. barrels, you're blind for six or eight feet. That's why you're having to chase it and you're missing a lot of the time out the back end. Perfect. So that's just a bit of an admin thing, really. I should do this for a job, really, I suppose, shouldn't I? Right, it's almost like you know what you're doing. I mean, I reckon, I mean, I keep I'm not, just got I'm, you off the street. I'm not, as, I'm not as relevant as I could be, but I am really good at guessing. <laughs> a bit like Manuel <laughs> Ricard, really. Yeah. Go on, one more pair, we'll move on, because this, uh, this is just to get you comfortable with the feel of the gun, really, more than anything. The gun looks like it's shooting where you want it, it to. How does it feel? It doesn't handle like my gun anymore. From a, from a balance perspective. Oh, completely different. Yeah, um, and that's, that's to be expected, gauge. I guess, yeah. yeah. Feels less steady, but that's yeah. just because it I think you've, you know, there's, there's quite a lot of wood there, a lot. which, you know, you're a, a tall guy, you're gonna have a lot of wood. One of the things that's gonna make is the balance a bit back heavy. You might look at trying to get some weight put on the barrels, whether you do it with lead strips down the, the side of the ribs. Something. Have you got multi-chokes in that? I don't know. Okay, fine. Which is why I got it, because it was nice. I could have a little splintery stock and it yeah. balanced really nicely. Yeah, that, how's that, that working for you now? Well, Manuel's <laughs> done a great job on it, hasn't he? <laughs> What one to, no, one thing one. that's noticeable for me is you look like you're having to drive your head into the gun harder than you were when we were putting it up before. I don't know whether that's what you were doing when you are dry mounted and what you're doing versus shooting. Do you feel, when you say different sight picture, is it higher than what you're used to? Yes, like it felt, it sounds stupid, I just I set the comb up so that it felt right. Yeah. And I saw perhaps a little more rib than I was used to before. Since I took the beads off, that's really changed my sight picture needing to see a little bit more, so I've had to float my head a bit. So yep. I think I might have just overcooked it. So I like a high shooting gun, but if it's higher than what you're used to, then uh, you've either got to bite the bullet and accept that you're going to have a bit of a transition and learn in a slightly different perspective, yeah. or you're going to do what you're doing now is try to jam your head down into the gun to get the old sight cool. picture. Try for the next five or six shots, just shoot it what you'd say naturally. So don't, don't try and make a sight picture. Yeah. If there's anything that drastically wrong with how you're actually shooting the birds, we'll address it, but from a sort of sight picture and head position perspective, do what you're used to doing. Don't try and make it something it's not. Oh, 
push away. Perfect. Ooh. Oh. All right, I don't know why that second one came out, but the, first, anyway. the yeah. first one was the important one. That was the perfect move. So long connection, long, steady stretch into the gap. That should have felt easy. The fact that you gutted it will make you feel yeah. better, but hell, how much bend is in that? Well, I've got quite a handsome jaw. As Haven't Sasha you knows. just? A little bit. Have a look at this, just so you can, just so you can see what this, what you're battling with. <laughs> yeah. So if I hit one, I think I should get some sort of prize. Uh, I tell you what, I will give you a uh, COVID compliant hug. That's got to be worth. Is that a euphemism for something? Yeah. When everyone's not watching. Yeah. Private. Okay. I'm, I'm, would you mind if I shoot this gun up? Because yeah, I'm not fine. sure shooting this gun down is going to be. Yeah, it's fine. Ideal. I, I, my suggestion. I reckon, with the amount of leads in your targets, just aim, if you put the top of the lead straight at them, built in lead. Spray and pray. Yeah, why not? All right, that is why he's a hateful creature. Mate, that was impressive. It was nice to see that sort of slower style in practice. And no one was more surprised than me. <laughs> Do you what? You know, I, I think that is, a, that is a good job. I think to, for it to be as, as close as you know, how it feels for you, and that's, that's the bit I find really hard to quantify, is saying someone what's right and what's wrong, because yeah. when I've had them done for me, it's very much on um, a bit out of there. That is, it, you know, that is really important, like I say, because you have strange little bits of skin and yeah. finger lengths that they, they measure, but it's not always going to be perfect. Yeah. But I, I think it's an amazing job. But I think for, for seven or 800 euros or whatever it is, I would... I have no issue with somebody saying, would you, would you think that's a good idea? I've got one of my lads, I'd say now. Yeah, I think that's yeah. worth looking at. Like, you'd waste that on shooting clays and missing them. Or... Over the course of the year, you'd probably waste it on Ooh. broccoli or something like that over 12 months yeah. if you actually work out what you spend on stuff. So, Given yeah. that most of the guns that people shoot are thousands of pounds, what's, yeah. a, what's a 900 pound stock? This is the thing though that you, you will see quite a lot with people. I've seen it with, with people having custom stocks is, they might think that it's some sort of shortcut for a lack of Magic talent, pill. and unfortunately there isn't one. You know, you can, you can have something that's better than what you had before, which is great, and it's certainly not gonna hold you back, but if you point it in the wrong place, it's still gonna miss, you know? Um, <laughs> no, no some, one wants to hear that. Some Keep people, that information. Some no people that. don't like hearing that, that they're not maybe the so next spending a thousand euros won't make you exponentially better, but I, I would say that it was worth someone investing in this almost as much as it was, given that, let's say the 30% of people who aren't out of the box people yep. should get one of these in line with a course of good lessons. Yeah. And between those two, yeah, happy listen, days. For, for, for someone like yourself, you're never gonna be able to go into a gun shop or one in a thousand times you'll be able to go into a gun shop and find something that nearly fits you because you are very much outside of normal. Yeah. Welcome Thanks, to mate. my world. Um, but, you know, that for, for 700 quid, someone who's got a, a fairly consistent mount, yeah, why not? Because you only end up sort of trying to buggy your way through and, and make something that's never going to work yeah. close or, enough. Or pay that amount of money to have plastic, wood, horn, metal adjustables cut into your yeah. stock. Just get something from scratch. So, I mean, the adjustable comb is a 200 euro extra. For me, as much as I'm not an adjustable comb fanboy, I probably wouldn't order one of these if you're not going to go to a gun fitter and have your fit sheet done before ordering it. Just those extra few millimetres of movement is... And I'll, I'll go along tuning. with that. All of the customers that I've got, which I've had said, whether it's to Kriegoff or elsewhere, to get custom stocks, even though we know what we want, I always say, get an adjustable comb put in. You don't know what the future holds. If you, you gain a bit of weight, you lose a bit of weight, whatever. You shooting can even when you, especially if you're not getting to shoot, one of the great things where you go and do the stuff at Kriegoff is you've got the indoor shooting range, so you can actually see how people operate and how they shoot with the stock. But if you've not got that luxury, how you mount the gun dry mounting indoors might be completely different to what you do on the range. And at the end of the day, this is the bit that matters. So if you can't get it nailed down 100%, yeah, get an adjustable comb put in. Worst way is you leave it on its lowest setting. You don't know it's there anyway. You've got two holes in a piece of wood. Who cares? You're not looking at it when it's in your shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. Especially for clay shooting guns. They're not, they're, they're here to work. Not at all. Yeah. I say, even for game shooting guns, they're, they're here to work. Yep. If you're not breaking targets or killing pheasants. I'd sooner, I'd sooner hit with something that's got a couple of holes in the stock than miss with something that's made out of one bit. There you go. So that was that. As you can tell at the shooting ground, I was a bit confused. However, I've had the time to go away, think about it, and shoot the gun a couple more times. 
And here it is. Here is my conclusion. Firstly, the process could not be simpler. Measuring your body, filling out some things and having a conversation with someone over WhatsApp, pretty simple. The product. I wouldn't hesitate to recommend that someone go and do this actually, and I was pretty nervous at how close they'd get it. To get it as close as they did over the internet without ever having met me is pretty insane, actually. It's pretty insane and, and does show there is some serious science behind gun fitting. It's worth mentioning at this point that if you went to 10 different gun fitters, each of them would probably give you a different answer as to what you need. And without truly spending a lot of time with somebody and personally changing their gun and watching them shoot, you can't do a 100% job. So for Mama Ricardo to get it 90% of the way there, that's pretty good. Value, 700 euros, 900 with the adjustable, for a grade two custom made stock is great value. Is great value. You're not gonna to touch anything like that getting it made domestically. So that is an amazing value product. I would rather perhaps that somebody went out and bought themselves a silver pigeon and had a custom stock made rather than spent that entire sum on an upgraded model. They might not get the same effects. I think in reality though, the answer would be to get a gun, have it fitted properly, turn your stock into a pattern stock, and then send that pattern stock to Manuel Ricardo. Although I understand, that, again, there's an extra cost there that perhaps might not be possible. I've spoken to quite a few people across the world at this point who are having the stocks made, who say that actually getting a gun fitted is not an option in many corners of the globe. And we really are blessed here in the UK to have a dozen or so great gun fitters. How did it shoot? How did it fit? really very well. There's a few things that I would change personally. However, you know, again, I was trying not to get too involved in this process with them and trying to implement too many other things that I would like. Given that that's not the point in the one-click process, the one-click process is that for people who aren't perhaps as experienced as me can go in and have a stock made for them. It's a great option. My final conclusion is that I am not going to keep that gun on my Mark 38. I'm going to get myself another gun to put that on. It's interesting that my gun had a custom stock on it anyway, so it's, it's not a fair comparison to comparison. If I was moving from a factory stock to that, it would be revolutionary. However, for me, it's not the fit that is the issue. It is the size of the stock. And so it's worth bearing in mind that this gun may change the balance of your gun if you have a light and nimble barreled gun. That stock, for example, mostly because I have so much wood because it's so long and it's quite deep, I'm gonna need to upgrade, or, or not upgrade, change my gun to a multi-choke gun. I'm not gonna get rid of my Mark 38. I think it's better that I keep that pure, put it in the cabinet and go and find a 32 inch barreled Browning Maruku action. And the beauty of getting a more common action light is that stock will bolt onto any gun that I get. And so I can build myself, if I bought an older 325 30 inch, 32 inch multi-choke, I can bolt that stock on there and for all in under 2000 pound have a custom made gun that's gonna shoot really well. And that for me was one of the, the only thing that I was expecting that I didn't expect quite so readily was how it would change my gun and its handling. But that won't be the case for everybody, so don't stress about that unless you're a giant. Overall, I really wouldn't hesitate to do this. I think before I would have probably worried. I would have worried. I would never worried about the quality of workmanship. I've seen a lot of Manuel's work and it is all exceptional. The real worry here was the gun fit. And it got that very, very, very close. Closer than a lot of people get on a first try gun fit. You know, excuse me, the gun fit process should be quite a long form thing. You yeah, know, that's pretty good. My conclusion is this, go and get a gun fit, a proper gun fit, make a pattern stock and send it to him in an ideal world. However, that not being the case, for 700 euros for a fixed stock, just get it done. If you think that you need a custom stock that badly or a gun fits you that badly, go invest, do it. You're not gonna regret it. Certainly one of the highlights of the experience is how close they got that grip. I mean, that grip is so close to perfect without ever having seen my hands. That is a serious science. I'd love to go over there and actually see the process and learn some of the secrets, but I guess that's what he's got over other people. So that's not gonna be shared anytime soon. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Take care. Don't hesitate to contact Manuel Ricardo if you're interested in one of these stocks.